The comparison theorem involves three sequences, xn, yn, and zn. And it says that if we know that xn is smaller or equal to yn, which is smaller or equal to zn, at least eventually, which formally we can write as at least for every n bigger or equal to n bar. So n bar just means a specific n. And if in addition to that, we know that the limit of xn and also the limit of zn are both equal to l, then essentially, since yn is in between the two, the only thing it can do is also have a limit equal to l. So the proof for this is going to be pretty straightforward. It just applies the definition of convergence that I went over in the uniqueness of the limit um, video. And the definition of convergent says that if a sequence converges to a value, let's say to zero, if you take a neighborhood of zero, so a neighborhood could be something from here to here, you're going up and down by the same radius, then we can see that starting from some point that we call n bar, which would probably be this one, this sequence is going to enter the neighborhood. So formally, we say that for every radius greater than zero, there is going to be a specific n bar, which is just a special uh, point. After which, the sequence will belong to the neighborhood. So if our sequence is xn, then we would be saying that xn belongs to the neighborhood of the limit. So for the proof, we're really just going to apply this definition for both xn and then zn, and then we're going to show that it's also going to be satisfied for yn, because essentially we're just saying that all three sequences converge. So first of all, we know that from the beginning, xn is smaller or equal to yn, which in turn is smaller or equal to zn. This is true at least eventually, so at least for every n bigger than a particular value. Here we're just going to call it n1, n bar 1. And we can say that since the other two sequences both converge to the same value l, so since limit of xn is equal to limit of zn, which is equal to l, we can say that they both satisfy the definition, definition of convergence, which as we said above means that for every, for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a particular n bar. This might be a different n bar than the other one, so we're going to call it n bar 2. After which, the sequence is going to belong to the neighborhood. Here we're going to rewrite that, so instead of writing it with the neighborhood uh, notation, we're going to say that xn is in between the limit plus epsilon and the limit minus epsilon. Because the way that you actually get your um, neighborhood is by going up and down by the radius. So this would be L plus epsilon, and this would be L minus epsilon here, essentially the, the boundaries of the neighborhood. So here we're just saying that, that xn is in between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. Then we say the same kind of thing, but for the other sequence, uh, zn, since that one also converges to L. So here we have a third n bar that we call n bar 3. And we can say that for every n after that, again, uh, zn is going to be in between l plus e and l minus e. So from there, we can say that if we take the maximum of these uh, n bar values, so these are just specific uh, n values, and we call that n bar, theoretically, after we take the maximum, all three of these things will be satisfied at the same time. So uh, the sequences xn and zn will be in the neighborhood, and also yn will be in between x and z. So if we now just combine those three things together, if yn is in between xn and zn, and xn and zn are both in between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon, if we just put all of these inequalities together, on the lower end, we have xn, 
then yn is a little bit greater than xn, which in turn is smaller or equal to zn, which is then smaller than l plus epsilon. So all we did was just combine the two definitions of convergence with the fact that yn is in between x and z. Now we were trying to prove that yn converges to l as well. So since we don't really care about x and z anymore, we can just ignore these parts because inequality is still going to hold. And we end up with yn is in between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. And this is exactly what the definition of convergence uh, says. So at this point, we can say that the limit of yn is equal to l, which means then that yn converges to l. And that's what we wanted to prove.